Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. You don't know. Walk on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up, man. How's it going? Bless, bless. Say, man, this here is a special, special kind of uh, uh this 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 one right here, it touches my heart, man, to be honest with you. Um when I met this guy, I, I, we we linked up online, man, and 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 we became brothers at that point to me. Because of the way we had like spirits, man. Mm -hmm. And to hear his story, the one that he's about to tell today, it pretty much, um, it's going to show you why. We it, it, This guy here is special, man. I'll keep you, what's going on, baby? Man. I'll keep you so strong. Yes, sir. Bit. Yes, sir. Let me let me get my own clap right quick. Hey, hey man. man. <laughs> Can y'all hear you clap? So strong, man. I could have gave you clap. Hey, no, play. Oh, listen, we'll go back and add that. No, we'll go back. <laughs> I hit the button. It, it, oh, you, got the, you got all I that? I got all oh, that. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's it. All of no, but, but I mean, you, you different, man. Yeah. I'll keep you, 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 you've came through a lot of obstacles. And a lot of the obstacles that you came through, would have took some out. It did. It did take some. It did out. take many out. It did so, take many so out. the thing that that tripped me out about your story is that you was able to overcome a lot of things. That's like I said, a lot of people didn't overcome. It was a struggle. It wasn't easy. You know, I'll be lying to you to say that. You know, I mean that the journey was perfect. It wasn't perfect. It was, it was a lot of trials. It was a lot of hills. It was a lot of walls. It was a lot of obstacles. Um, there were many times I said, forget it. There was times I did give up mentally, uh, spiritually. I walked away from God. You know what I mean? Came back, walked away again, fell down on my back, fell down on my face. But you know, when, when you know there is something inside of you that, that God placed in you, no matter what you go through, you have to fulfill it. You know, you said something. You say you walked away from God, but yep. really, you know, nothing can separate you from the love of nothing, God. Nothing, nothing. As it says in Romans, in Romans chapter 8 tells you that. You see what I'm saying? So no matter how you try to think in your heart, see, you can make these things up because the Bible says, so is a man thinks in heart, so, so is he. he. So if you put these things in your heart and articulate them that way, you can cause that schism, kind of like, Kind of like Jonah was doing when he was mm -hmm, running, mm -hmm. when he ran to Tarshish instead of going to Nineveh. Him. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to go this way. But then when he ran, God was in control of that situation too. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And 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 the people around him would say, no, we're going to save. And he said, throw me over. Throw mm -hmm. me into the water. Mm -hmm. And he, he and, and they wouldn't do it. And they decided they was going to go against God too, just like Jonah. And as they both went against God, the storm grew worse. And they couldn't understand that spiritually, God had something bigger in store that they couldn't fathom in their mind anyway of a big fish engulfing him. So a lot of times people try to make things right in their own power. But really, God is the one over and in control of everything. What do you think about that? Oh, No, what I was going to say is that when you bring that back around to, you know, what goes on in today's society, a lot of times we have friends who mm -hmm. go through things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they go through things over and over again. And we try to help them. Like, say, example... Somebody who they have money, but they can't pay their rent because they keep shopping all the time or whatever. But they keep on doing stuff and they're like, hey, you got some money to help me, whatever. And you mm -hmm. keep on bailing them out, keep on bailing them out. But they're not growing. They're not safety coming. safety net. They keep coming. Right. So we are stopping them from going through what God intended for them mm -hmm. to go through. Cause exactly. We tend, the same thing what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were trying to help him. But it, they're not realizing they're hurting him because God has a bigger picture, a bigger plan for you mm -hmm. when you're going through situations. He wants you to rise above mm -hmm. it and follow what he needs for you to do. Mm -hmm. Every, every yeah. process has a purpose. Every process. And what I didn't understand is that everything that I went through, experienced from molestation, from foster care, from abandonment, from abuse from my father, um, abuse from my mom and going through the system. I did not understand why me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand it, and yeah. and and honestly, I thought at a at a certain point in my life it was something wrong with me. Yeah, yeah. like it was almost like 
you're cursed. Wow. And honestly, I can say that I felt that people looked at me that way, that yeah. I was a cursed kid. Yeah. And, you know, because you would hear that that certain saying from certain adults who had kids that I played with in the neighborhood, don't play with that little boy. Wow. You know, I heard that. And so um, it it mentally did something to me, but I, I, I felt like that maybe they feel like I'm not good enough. You know, family said certain things. Maybe he's not good enough. Maybe, you know, that, that black sheep or that, mm -hmm. that one person in the family that, you know, people look at it as a problem. Um, be that it made that I was not a perfect kid. I'm not going to sit here and act like I was. Uh, I was still anything in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I did things. I was very devious. I was. But I always told people, and actually that's my third book. We'll get into that. My third book is called Uneducated and Misunderstood. Okay. And when you look at many of the traumatic, the, the traumatic issues that we have in the black communities and a lot of these young men, there's a lot of things that we only looking at from a surface level that not understanding there's a lot of deep rooted core things that these individuals have went through experience. So once you tap into that, then you can understand the behavior. And so that was me. I had attitudes. I fought in every school. I got kicked out in every school. I did all these things. I was crying out for attention. He's acting out. Yep. And that's crazy because that's, that's a lot of our children, black children. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that that because there there was a lot of not being healed in our ancestry mm -hmm. where we went through things where we had to we had to move on mm -hmm. and it hurt us and it affects us to this day mm -hmm. I really believe that mm -hmm. you know because the broken homes the broken you know in, the, in our community um that pretty much is a norm mm -hmm. it, it has it, it is normalized to where we don't have uh a lot of times the fathers or the mothers and I, just like that young boy that just left here and just like you and just like me, you go through this thing where at nine, you know, your family ripped apart because they can't make it happen. You know what I mean? And but at the end of the day, the only thing, and this is my opinion, okay, is that at the end of the day, it's your decision to change because a lot of people always blame it on generational sin. Oh, my daddy, I didn't know. I didn't this. We're in a generation where, Social media is there, internet is there. You can research anything. You can find positive role models out there of anybody. Mm -hmm. So you have no excuse. I've seen people who said, I have a single father or a single mother. I went through all of these things, and they turned out perfect. Good. Yeah. Not, yeah. not perfect. Yeah, but it's, perfect. Still a, it's still a process. So it's a process. It a process. You, you got to think I'm about that. What I'm saying is that you have both ends of it you have the ones who turned out really bad and you have the ones that still turned out good so you have so you have the choice yeah i just think that it's a process because of the fact that even though you can even you can normalize but they, there has to be some healing well you know you can no you can fake it you can normalize it but we've we have not just young people people in general we have desensitized the whole experience of the things that we went through meaning that we have suppressed it. So if, 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 if you have been molested by your uncle, you know, that pain is not even pain no more, but it shows in every relationship you have with a man, wow. you know, we don't talk about that yeah. because we are told don't talk. That's not true. And you got to look at the effect. You know, my mom used to have many men in and out the house. My father used to have many women in and out the house. So how can me as a young man look up to someone how to treat a woman? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I think having multiple women is a, a way you treat a woman. Vice versa, if it was a young lady seeing her mother and you're saying that, that's why you see so many young women have kids at a early age. Both of my sisters had kids at the age of 15. Wow. And, you know, when we look at all of these things, yes, it is a choice, but what options do too many young black girls or boys have? Because with me, yes, there was another kid who probably went through similar situations that I went through. But what other options did he or she have? When I look at it, I didn't have lights. I didn't have running hot water. I knew how to cook dope and cut up dope at 12. My brother, who was serving 30 years right now, put me in a crack house and would sell dope for him. My mom at 12 would come to me and, and want to buy dope. You know, when you have all of these things happening, 
I don't have no other options. You can't you can't display to me what other path that you can take because this is the only path that's that been shown have. to me. Yeah, yeah. And so it, when, when you look at little Tim Tim down the street who father Papa ran out of his life, it doesn't balance or, or level out compared to what he's going through because he don't have a father, a mother, support, none of that. So the only thing he has left is to defend in survival mode. So he's had to get it however he can. So, but to your, 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 your statement is, it is true. It is a choice. That's why I had to make a choice. Yeah. Like, do I continue to hold on to the things that I went through in my past? Yeah. Or do I make something of it? Do I use my past as fuel to motivate me to be great? Or do I use it to keep me where I'm at? So it is a choice. It's, it all it all boils down to a choice. Yeah, um, molestation. Oh you man, know. that's that's exactly what I was <laughs> thinking. What, you know, it's it's what, crazy. What happened? And uh, if you want to get into, man, it. come on. This is what God, God like, said. Like, Listen, no, that's sir. That's the only way you can get healing. So I'm healed. Yeah. So so what? Because you don't the, hear many men. No, no. We had another guy that just brought that up on uh, that was supposed to come back on the show. Yeah, but he. I'm talking. He didn't come back. Right. Yeah. I don't hear yeah. that very yeah. often. Yeah. Yeah. So so was it family member? Uncle? Um. Uh, Amy? Before before I was before I was 11, I was molested four times. Wow. Um. Two by women and two by men. Wow. And um. Uh. One of the one of the females were was a relative. Wow. And the the one that that I feel like. You know, and I and I love talking about it. Why do I love talking about it? Because my testimony is healing to somebody. That's what I know. Mm-hmm. You know, and so mm-hmm. that's. But I I've, I can always tell people, you have to heal first. Yeah, you have to heal. Yeah, and, you know, and and so when I hear other people giving a testimony and and they're struggling and they and they teary out and they cry, you're not healed yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How I long healed. did it take you to heal? I want to say I was in my mid or my maybe my late. Late twenties. Oh, so it took you some years. It took me some years. It took me years to forgive my mom. How did you finally heal? What was it that that when God gave me when God gave me my calling? There it is. When he when he gave me my calling, everything you went through, it's going to be used for your greater good. And so, from the molestation, from the abuse, but but everything that I went through, I I've told myself I would die with this. Like I can talk about. When I was seven, I was molested every single night by a woman. Every single night at seven years old, I can talk about where where a guy made me hold his penis in my hand. You know what I mean? I'm eight nine years old. I don't know, yeah. but I know this ain't right. Yeah. But I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I I can remember being fondled with by another guy. You know what I mean? And I can remember also going over relatives' house and they making me stick my hand down their pants. You know, wow. but it, it's some sick people out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I can talk about it because there's a lot of people refuse to talk about it and just going to internally deal with it. And so they're they're dying inside inside. They dealing with their problems and the pain and it, and it, it affects trust relationships. It trust. I mean, it, it, it affects you in so many other ways spiritually. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Because honestly, in order to become closer to God, you have to trust him. I've met so many women who have been molested mm-hmm. and didn't come up straight forward eventually and told me that. But after a while of building trust, they did open up and tell me. And some of them either became gay because I was molested by a man, so they don't want to be around men, or um, you have some that are married now or and been molested, but they bring it over into their relationships. Yes. You know what I mean? Cause it it's spills hard over. to let go of certain things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So how is it possible to truly heal though? Cause some people have told me that that's something that you will always, even when you're married, sometimes you don't want to be touched because it, it reminds you, it's reminds a trigger. you it's a trigger. of what you've been through. Certain things Although do trigger you've you. moved on, you, mm-hmm. you really haven't moved on. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that. Mm-hmm. And I, as, and today's society for women, not men, because you don't hear men talk about it as much, it's this Me Too movement, so you'd think that a lot more people would be apt to come out and talk about it, but there's a lot of people who still don't want to talk no, about it. No, they're not. It. They're not going to talk about it because some of the people that molested them is people probably in their family. Mm-hmm. You know, some people that, that probably experienced that, you know what I mean? And to answer your question, we have to start understanding that therapy is important. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of people don't want therapy. They don't want to go through therapy. They don't want to sit down and talk to people about the things Especially that they went through. Yeah, yeah. we we do not believe in counseling, we, marriage marital counseling. Yeah, that's it. But when to sit down and talk about the things that we're dealing with, we don't want to do that. So mm-hmm. I told I told somebody I was in Minnesota. I was speaking at this uh, conference. They fly me out every year, twice a year, and a young lady asked me that. She asked me that, and I was telling her my story, and she was like, raised, rose her hand. She was like, uh, did you ever do counseling or therapy? Mm-hmm. And I was like, at that age, I didn't. But then I was had a reality check. Everyone's not strong like you. Right. Everyone probably can't overcome that like you overcame it. So you can't tell people just because you didn't do it that they shouldn't do it. I think... <sighs> It's a touchy situation. Yeah. And the reason it's touchy for me is because I believe in the power of God so much that, that the Holy saying. Spirit is what comforts you. I think so I mean. think that's the part where it becomes real, real, uh, a real situation for me. And I've said this to Many you before, times, right? because a lot of times we try to go to a counselor. Well, what does that counselor believe? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I believe through Christ I'm healed. Mm-hmm. That's me. Mm-hmm. I can't tell nobody else. I went through a lot as a kid. But what cleansed me was when, I, when, like it says in Second Corinthians, if any man be in Christ, he's a new, mm-hmm. he's a he's new, a new creature. creature. I Absolutely. believe that. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I think that's what caused me to change. Mm-hmm. And I know it did because it's been 30 years, 20 some years, I hadn't drank, smoked, done nothing right. no more. Mm-hmm. It swapped my life around. God took me and pulled me up mm-hmm. out the fire. And I think that's something that, that has to be said. Mm-hmm. I don't think that a counselor, unless he's, the, the Bible says the Lord is your counselor. True. So True. I think that a lot of times people don't put the time into that, that they so busy trying to do it in a Protestant, you know, in a, no, in a, in a, in a, you know, a Protestant way. Okay. You know what I mean? Like in, in a, a way to where, you where, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, a way to where you think you're going to go to a, a church building, sit in a, sit in, over in here in a, in, 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 in a congregation and that's, and that's going to happen. It no, don't happen like no, that. No, it don't. It don't. It's a it process where you have to read the word of God and you have to really believe in God and give up everything that you ever thought was something so you can be rebuilt. But you know what? People don't have relationships with God. There you go. A true relationship. True relationship. There you go. Because you have a lot of people who say that they love God, they believe in God, or that they when even, it's convenient for them, or that they even give up whatever they're going through to God. But then, is a difference when you truly give up, when you truly devote yourself to God, because we're of flesh, mm-hmm. so nobody's perfect. No and one's perfect. No matter how much we say we 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 truly love Him, we still on our phone all the time we still find excuses why we'd be watching tv all the time instead of reading the bible or you know we put a lot of things up before god or prayer Mm -hmm. before him Mm -hmm. and that's everybody Mm -hmm. no matter who you are you Mm -hmm. could be the the person that is in you know what i mean Mm -hmm. did you watch a video or something i had because i just did a video about that literally i just what you just said verbatim i just said that we have to start carving out time every single day for god not when it's convenient for us. You know, he had to he had to get me where he knew he had me in order for him to really get me to know what I need to do in my my life. And that hap- that happened when I was in prison. I didn't grow up in church. I didn't have a religious background. I didn't have a grandmother who prayed for me. I didn't have a mom who prayed for me. I didn't have no one telling me to go to church on Sunday or Wednesday. I didn't. I had none of that. So when when I gave my life to Christ, did you know about God since nobody told me that? Nothing. I mean, you, well, you know, I had that pri- I, I had that relationship, that prison relationship, that jail so, relationship. So that was the only time you knew about God is when you were in prison. That's it. That's it. My That's grandma, what I was trying to get. Yeah, to. I didn't. I didn't. And I tell people like, when I hear people, I say you're a traditional Christian. <laughs> You know, because you was brought up, you was raised, and so you're afraid to look at anything any different. Mm-hmm. You know, I I went into this thing with 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 nothing to gain, nothing to lose. I've, I've I don't have nothing to offer you, mm-hmm. and it it wasn't. I had so many brothers when I was in federal prison. I had so many brothers used to come to me. They saw something that I didn't see, but it was it's was, it was so amazing how so many people used to say they see something in me that I didn't see in myself. Yeah, and, and I just never saw when you said, "Man, you is something, boy." You, 
I didn't see what you couldn't saw. Well, you couldn't see the picture from being in the picture. Oh, come on, man. So Say that, that, that. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that no, little bugger they have? No, like, like, real. <laughs> like you couldn't see the picture from being in the picture. On, A lot of times you can't see it. But at the end of the day, your gift will make room you for make you. Room for you. Mm -hmm. so, and, and that's where a lot of people don't get it. Like, I, don't, I, I, didn't, I haven't sat down with all the greats. I'm not sitting here with all the majors, all the accolades, and all the degrees. I don't have all of that. Yeah, God said, I will make the unqualified qualified. That's right. That's I right. make the unskilled skilled. People say, man, how do I don't know, bro. I didn't choose this platform. Yeah. I'm on Boss Talk 101. Real talk. In, in, in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. In Dallas, Texas. I'm from Charlotte. I'm from a small town. Yes, sir. With three felonies and bending out the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? God said, listen, when you move, I move for you. You know what I mean? So everything that I feel like what I'm doing is is all God. You know what I mean? I don't care what people look at. They can look at all the nice things. But, bro, listen, I don't take no credit before I give it to God. Mm -hmm. man. This is all God, man. Like, like I could, when I when I tried to kill that dude at 13, yeah. that was that 24 years of life could have happened. Could could have happened. You know what I mean? When, when, I, when I tried to kill that person at 19. Okay. In broad daylight, that 35 years of life could have happened. Could have happened. When I thought about suicide, two attempts, it right. could have happened. Every robbery attempt that I, I did do, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I, my plan was to go in here and take and leave. No, it wasn't. That's what's And up. a lot of people who knew who used to ride with me, nah, bro, listen, no, don't, don't even, just, just go ahead and do it. Wow. And people used to be like, bro, are you crazy? Wow. Nah, go ahead, go ahead, kill him, kill him. I was lost, bro. Wow. Like, when I be seeing a lot of people, like, to me, I'm 40. Okay. And to me, every day is a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. I don't take it for granted. You know, every day I think back at so many times that I slid between that crack, so many times that my life was spared, so many times that I feel like God God was right there in the midst. There were so many times where I wanted to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It didn't go off. Yeah, yeah. It didn't go off. Yeah. But no. to be here go ahead. traveling around the world, empowering people, mm. man, you you'd be surprised. I was just telling the group where I just spoke at. Man, every day is an opportunity for you to get it right. Mm -hmm. That's real time. Every day. Every day. If you woke up this morning, God did his part, the rest on you. Man, you know, it's it's a blessing in everything that you think. Everything. Of. I always tell people if you woke up this morning and put your pants on your leg instead of on your head, you woke up in your right mind. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to think, give it up for that. You already is ahead of the game. Thank you, God. When you get up in the morning. Thank you, God. So this is a whole different ball game. But go <laughs> ahead. You got, you got something you was about but to say. Everything is mental, and people don't understand. You have to start in your mind. Everything yeah, yeah, starts yeah. in your mind. Because even like when I was talking about you have to put God first in everything, I'm not just talking about people, I'm talking about myself as well, because I know that I, you know, yes, I pray, yes, I read, but you know, when you, you convict yourself knowing that you could be doing that a lot more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I, I've told friends and told people, I said, let me tell you how you keep God in your life is always talking about him. Yeah. If you just think about him and you're not talking about him, you, the devil can, uh, can attack you a lot easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you talk about him all the time, it's like you keep him beside you. Mm -hmm in every conversation, everything you do, if you're talking about him, how are you going to do something wrong? You, because you're talking about him. You're talking mm -hmm. about it now. Most of the times when you do something wrong, you're not thinking about mm -mm. God at mm -mm. all. Not at all. So the I'm, more you talk about him, the more you read, the more you do things, yeah. you'll stay in your right place where we should be. Yeah, I think like here lately, like the other day when me and you was going through our issues or whatever, and you prayed with me, you mm. know, and 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 you, you, we say let's pray, you know. When we, I think that's, that's something so that we grow in, and where I can, you can see me going through what I'm going through, and you can say, you know what, I think this is that, and I can respect you for that, and say let's pray, come pray with me, let's mm -hmm. pray about it. We making breakthroughs, even though we've been together for almost twenty years, we still growing in each other, and, and you how, always do that. Yeah, you always yeah. Do always that. growing. What 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 I feel too is is that we don't we don't have genuine people who we can pray with. Yeah, many people, too many people have too many hidden agendas, too many hidden intentions. Mm -hmm. sure. In the church, yeah, those who you close with, yeah, and we have to be careful because some people 
they see the anointing on your life. Mm -hmm. Definitely. They see the glow. And anything and everything they can, they would try to infiltrate that. Mm. More like than, this, this union. Yeah, yeah. Like this union. Yeah. No, I already you know, know it. You know I what I'm saying? It. I know. I've been, I'm, I'm watching it like, like that's my job. You know what I mean? That's where Adam messed up when he didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something. Right, right. And I'm going to protect what you God is to. doing with me and my relationship with him. You got to. And with the woman that he you got to. Mm -hmm. That's you the important to. part right you there. You got to. You got to protect that in a way to where you... You 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 speak to different things that are not supposed to happen. You supposed to speak. That's what happened with Adam. Mm -hmm. He didn't speak. He didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And she ate of the fruit the way mm -hmm. we believe, the mm -hmm. way we read. And a woman is supposed to be submissive enough where she's gonna allow him to be the head of the household, mm -hmm. the head of her, as long as he is putting Christ the head of him right. because that's the hierarchy in mm -hmm. which it should form. That's so right. as long as he's doing what he's supposed to do in the Lord, she's supposed to be supporting him and doing oh, his yeah. decisions of I, how to protect the family and so forth. And I, I, I want to go back to, you know, we said church a while ago and I always yeah, say I was this. Gonna you knew I was going to go there. So gonna like it's, just, it, it's an auditorium and that's we got to make say. it. And the reason it's a building, it's, that's all it is. It's, it's just a building. But the word, the word church comes from the, from the word, Ecclesia, Greek mm -hmm. word, it means simply to be called out from among them. And somewhere along the line, somebody made it out of a building and, and said, this is where you got to go. And I'm not saying you don't have to assemble yourselves uh, or fellowship, but I am saying know who you are mm -hmm. because that's important. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, even when the pandemic hit and people had to separate themselves from everybody else, God still was in the midst of mm -hmm. them. And I think because of the way they were programmed, it limited their power. Mm -hmm in who they were in God. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very mm -hmm. careful how we articulate that word. Mm. So, so in, in other words, you're saying when all of this happened, the curtains came back. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. Everyone was truly re revealed who you really are. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not only as a person, but your faith. That your faith was tested. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Your t your many, faith. many shook. That's right. Many, many, many of them went and hidden. They yeah. start hiding. They start being so secretive and, 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 and safe with everything. Definitely. Oh, definitely. You, and you that, that, so I just wanted to say that because that needs to be said. Mm -hmm. It needs to be it needs to be exposed. Yeah. Because if you don't talk about it, it continues to grow. Mm -hmm. But when you speak on it, then people have to acknowledge mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. on this platform, we're going to make sure that the masses understand on, that there's a power within them, no matter who they are and no mm -hmm. matter where they're at when right. they believe in God. Come on. That's important. Yeah. And you, you can't be afraid to, to speak and talk about God in a way that is uncommon in certain areas. Yeah. Around certain people. Yeah. You know, and, and we, we are in a, 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 a in an industry and, it, and, and we got to be careful because we don't know who believe what. Yeah, you can't and offend people. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't even go there because when I hear people say that, and this is how I train my mind. Mm -hmm. Think about Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul was so bold to speak about Christ and his beliefs and everything like that. He didn't care. You could be the governor. Governor, you mm -hmm. could be anybody. He gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how we should be. And I, I've told, I've told myself, I tell people, I said, Paul was just a man. Peter was just a man. If they did it, you can do it. You can do we it. We can do it. Yeah. You should do it. Yeah. Well, that it. not not only that. If you do it, mm -hmm. then lives can change. Right. And I and I and, and it goes back to because I feel like when I gave my life to Christ, when I gave my life to Christ, it caused a domino effect. I saw my sister starting to get a more relationship in depth with God. I saw my mom and my other people that I knew that was in my family starting having conversations about relationships with God. When I when I came around, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the same people who I know I sold drugs with. When I come visit my mom, she made sure don't sell that stuff around my boy. You, he, I'm like, ma, I sold the same stuff. Wow. You know, my brothers, I won't. They won't. I ain't gonna drink this beer because you. I'm the same. <laughs> you know, it, but that just shows you when you are a new creation. Create on uh, creation. creation, creation. Yes, God is in it, and when God is in it, I'm telling you right now that everything around you will change. The people will change. You don't have to change. You're the same person. You don't have to tell them. I it, don't have, it, it, it comes out. The, the I, sense of respect. That, I think that that, many that's times what before. I teach. Um, that's this whole platform is set up that way because one and thing we, we talked about. Yeah, that, you have to be approachable. Mm -hmm. 
if you come up and you make rules and regulations and you you don't you believe you don't no because you, you your faith is weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. A lot of times the weak faith is what prevents people from pretty much putting themselves in situations mm -hmm. where they could help a mass of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because of their weak faith. Mm -hmm. Because if your faith is strong, mm -hmm. you believe that God is who he is and that he raised Jesus Christ from mm -hmm. the dead. Then you you don't mind. You know that same power in you. Mm -hmm. So you don't mind. You don't mind people doing whatever because you're supposed to be that light that mm -hmm. guides them out of darkness. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say, y'all don't get it twisted. It's a daily walk. That's a daily walk. Daily it's walk. A every single daily walk reminding yourself to stay on the straight and narrow, just like an alcoholic. Yes. Who is saying, okay, I got to keep going to AA. I got to keep uh -huh. doing this so I don't go into that bar and get a uh -huh. drink. Even And the devil come at you even harder All when type you're of trying angles. to walk straight. Yeah, yeah. You know your weakness. He know your weaknesses. Yeah. So he going to have those friends coming over, drinking in front of you, doing yeah. this, doing that, yeah. just to tempt you. Yeah. But Or most people always relapse whenever it's an argument with somebody or something devastating or you know what i mean and then they go right back to drinking mm -hmm. or going so it's the same thing like walking that path in christ mm -hmm. you going back to man i'm just gonna go and it's so funny what i was saying is that even although we're walking in christ and stuff like that the devil is slick mm -hmm. he will all day god bless you come with on. all the promotions come on to travel mm -hmm. to talk to people to do mm -hmm. this to do that but the busier we get mm -hmm. is the more mm -hmm. is the less time we have for christ because mm -hmm. we don't have that time to read mm -hmm. and to do the things that we should be doing you're gonna send a jazzy bear you know, watch your yeah, yeah, somebody who want to take, who, who want to manipulate. You. <laughs> you know, he goes, he yeah, goes, yeah, he goes, yeah. Well, we had a conversation the other day. Yeah, yeah. He gonna send somebody knowing, hey, this is this is this is the platform. Be perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and it's gonna it's gonna give you that that leverage. And you're like, oh, you know. But to me, and and to say. To echo what you're saying, to say that that the, the the more God gives you, the more responsibilities you have. I always look at the fact that if I do X, Y, Z, how many people is going to pay the price for that? And I didn't used to think like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't used to think. I I, I thought differently. I don't yeah. care. I'm a, but no, I can't think that way because there's a lot of people's souls is at stake. By my decisions, right. So every day you have, like, oh my God, it is a journey. It is, it is tough. And if you are not saying everything that I just had spoke about today, <laughs> I, I swear I said I was telling the gentleman and the ladies and gentlemen, I was like, listen, it's here. It starts here. Every day it's a fight. Every day it's a battle. Every day you got to climb. Yeah, it's yeah. not easy. Oh, just because you saying that you's a Christian, you think it's going to be a catwalk? Try it. Mm -hmm. Listen, well, I'm going to well, affect your well, finances. Well, the book don't even say that. No. Nah. The book says them that live godless shall, shall, be shall persecuted. suffer persecution. And it also says that if you walk after the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So when you guys were talking a while ago, I just kept thinking about that because if you can stay in that joy, if you can stay in that love and that faith and that gentleness and that meekness and that, you know, then you can you won't fulfill those lusts of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You 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 will do the things, and it's not an easy thing to do. Those nine things that it asks you to do in Galatians chapter mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. it ain't easy to stay on that course. It's nine simple things, but boy, it's tough yeah. to parallel them. You know, with your lifestyle. Sometimes just one. That's Part what I'm saying. <laughs> just, just, just trying to yeah, yeah, one. Just, just to try to, <laughs> but but that long suffering is the one. But it was. I mean, you should be able to suffer long through any situation, mm -hmm. and then we we cry. It's it's better said than done. Yeah, um, I've been through two divorces. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, and, and I was in the church. There you, you know go. What I'm saying there my first go. marriage. I was I was part of the sound uh, 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 praise and worship. I was a part of the uh, 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 um, a few things. I was I was heavily active, but my marriage was suffering. And and see there there it is again. You know? mm -hmm. There there it is. It's that tapping into mm -hmm. that personal relationship with God that mm -hmm. can can pretty much stabilize you mm -hmm. and who you are. Mm -hmm. And you and I both know that that no matter where you go, what what you're seeking. If you're not tapped into that Holy Spirit with God, you got to be. You got to be. It, it can cleanse everything, all unrighteousness, but you got to be tapped in. It don't matter where you go 
and who it matters who you know. Mm -hmm. But as you as you go and you you okay, I'm gonna go get this divorce. Okay, I'm and you steadily going and, and you being attacked by Satan. And you and I both know if you had God in his rightful place, then it would you wouldn't be dealing with this. Mm -hmm. So well, let me ask you this because you, mm -hmm. you guys say y'all been married for y'all been 18 together for years. eighteen years, mm -hmm. eighteen years, and out of the eighteen years, and I love asking this question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Out of 18 years, how many years you can say been good? Because I, the reason why I, I can't, I can't, I can't speak about 18 because my my short run is was real short. I was running one first marriage was one year, no, it was two years. The second was one year. I'm gonna answer it like this, and his answer will be different from mine. And the only reason I'm able to answer this now is because the frame of mind that I'm at, at right this now, point right in time, is the fact that. Um, I would say all okay. because if you don't go through, you don't grow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm learning so, that. So you have to go. Th so when you see you having problems, mm -hmm. um, you have to just learn how to handle it. Mm -hmm. For me in my life, anytime things come up that is against God or against the way in which you should live, I recognize it as the devil mm -hmm. right off the bat. But that wasn't me back in the day. Because when you're young, you're not thinking you just go with the flow hey, and stuff like that. Whatever you but feel. But now, you just you like an alcoholic, and I'm going to go back to that because I use that as, uh, as a good example, especially because of the pandemic, a lot of people turn alcoholic nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you have to recognize that you're an alcoholic to turn and say, okay, I'm going to get help. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need to change my thinking, change my life, change my everything. Okay, so say example, you're married, and I don't know whatever happened in your marriage and whatever, but say you know you're in church, those ladies after you and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know when they come at you and they come at you in a wrong way, you're like, okay, the devil is using you. Not say you're calling them the devil, mm -hmm. but the devil is using you to get to me. Mm -hmm. So, in order for you to overcome that, you have to first acknowledge that that is the devil. Mm -hmm. Not, oh my God, she think I'm fine. I'm, I'm old, but I'm not, I still got it. Mm -hmm. still, that's not the godly person in you saying those things, but that's when you get into the flesh and you're saying these things. Mm -hmm. So if you tap into the first thing you, you recognize, oh, that's the devil, you know how to handle it. If, but we don't think that way when adversities come at us. But if you did, you'd be like, oh no. Right. You, you, you can identify it. Exactly. Once yeah. you identify it, you can overcome you, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's what I use as my tactic right. now in today's day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's helped me a lot. And I've told a lot of my friends or anybody that I come in contact with and the discussion comes up. Because I tell people all the time, when you go through things, you have to spread your story because you don't know who's going to help. Right. And I say, you don't have to do it exactly like how I do it. Take it and make it your own, but Correct. use it to better your life. That's why when we do this platform, I love this platform because I'm hoping that someone out there will hear the stories and take it and use it in their life to make them life their life better. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, and and I, would, I would just add to what you're saying, you know, 18 years um, – like I said, I think it's a process. I think mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of times um, people get married because they say, "I'm," you know, or they leave because they say, "I'm not happy." But that was me. I'm not happy. That but was the, me. what make you think that you're supposed to be so happy? But you know what? Um, wait, wait a minute. Let me, let me just say that. Let me go there for a second. The, but, the, but, the, but, the, but you made a covenant before God. Yeah. And this covenant that you made. It wasn't about your happiness, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. It was a covenant before God that you had made a vow. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, as you grow, you start to learn these things that it's not about you. It's mm -hmm. about God. So it, it it's okay for one to go and get a divorce. The Bible speaks about a divorce, but he said before, you know, that was because of the hardness of your hearts that I gave you that. It wasn't, this wasn't something that it was because of yeah. how you failed to done that to you. So mm -hmm. all I'm saying is as you evolve, we've had some things that we went through that could have shut the whole thing down, Right. but it wasn't about our being happy. Right. You, we got kids. Yeah. And a lot of times people say, don't let the kids be the reason. But if you go in the Bible, it'll tell you that the kids are the reason. Right. So the devil is still playing those crafty games mm -hmm. with you. And you I'm just not happy mm -hmm. that he gets you off your game with God. Mm -hmm. And now 
here you are trying to figure it out all over again. Notice I didn't go back into the divorce statement. Mm -hmm. Just trying to figure, it's about the relationship yes, yeah. mm -hmm. between you and God. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with you leaving this person. You, it's about the relationship mm -hmm. between you and God. And once you figure that out, everything will start uh, to fall But you were about place. to say something. I mm -hmm. want to hear, but, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, did no, you get listen, what I was saying? Yeah, yeah because you, you were talking about, that's the reason why you. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, so I, mean I mean, I want you to get your, get your dab well, in there. <laughs> Get your little jab in there. It ain't nothing but a jab. Nah, I got these knockout nah, punches listen, over here, man. You, you, you already you, you pivot over there. You <laughs> every swing you are you, you ready. No, it's the truth though. It is, and and the reason why I asked that ask that question because you know I'm, I'm I'm listening, I'm watching, and I'm I'm huge on energy. Yeah, I'm real big on energy. Yeah, and you know, and I think you know we don't talk about that covenant. We don't talk yeah. about love. In the black community, we yeah. don't, you know, and 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 what we consider love is Beyonce and Jay Z. Okay, you know, we don't talk about God the way we need to in, in settings like this. We yeah. don't. The only way they talk mm -hmm. about God maybe is only on Sundays and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you when you don't have this right here, where you have people saying, "Man, we've been together twenty, married for eighteen, and we went through. Listen, we went through it. And we, we we still going through it, and we going yeah, through it together. Yeah, we yeah, don't. Yeah. We, and people will start. Younger people in general will start because right now it's those who are younger that will see and mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. that maybe I have been looking at this whole relationship thing the wrong way. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I have been mis misunder. Uh, maybe I have been lied to about the only way you can have a relationship with God. If I go to church, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. we have to have these conversations. Conversation. Mm -hmm. We have to, and, 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 and a lot of people, they shy away from these conversations because there, there was a lot of things that, that people, are not ready to have conversations about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that I deal with that I'm dealing with that I'm still going through. Yeah. And, and I don't want to talk about relationships because guess what? Everyone that I went through, everyone that I've been through, every woman that I have, I've always messed it up. Yeah. 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 yeah and yeah. so I never knew how to fight in a relationship. Yeah. 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 I've always learned I'm gone. Yeah. I got to put up with good this. That you've owned up to that. Yeah. And, and, and you know, because true. guess what? You're the man in the relationship. Yeah. You are the head. Mm -hmm. So you're the one who's supposed to be trying to hold it together. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you have to know that you have to pull closer to God and know your role as the the head of that household. Mm -hmm. And another thing you have to ask yourself is not just your relationship, but how many other things have you given up on? Yeah. Because it's a mm -hmm. trend. It ain't no. It, it ain't just that. that one it thing. ain't just that. And that's the whole game. And that's why you're, you've, right. you're, you're mm, compromising. You're right. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. Yeah, you're right. You're compromising yeah. at that point. And, and, yeah. and basically you saying. And you don't even realize No, it. I'm going to put you out right here. Uh, Jesus, I'll be back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you act like you can do it on your own. Yeah. That's what we yeah. do. We compromise and we get comfortable in our in our greatness and mm -hmm. all, it becomes about us. It becomes self-centered. And so that's why you say, you know what the hell with this? I'm mm -hmm. out of here. Mm -hmm. You was raised to quit. Yeah. In, in mm -hmm. a, you was raised mm -hmm. to quit. You watch your father quit on your mom. You yeah. watch your father yeah. walk out of your life. Yeah. You you you, you internalize that. And you use that. You I know what I'm saying? It. You know what I mean? And so you 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 gave up in school. You gave up in everything. Every time it got yeah. tough, you quit. Yeah. So you was raised to quit. So just because and that, oh man, I'm prophesying to myself right now. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, and and and, and that's what I witnessed. So every time something got tough for me, I just knew how to wave the flag. Yeah, yeah. That's all I know how to I'm do. Done. I'm done. It was easy for me to to wave the flag. Yeah. If I wave, I get. It's easy to quit. Yeah. And it goes back to what we said earlier. Everything's mental. Mental. Everything's it mental. It all goes back to, to that. mental. It all goes back. I told like if I come over there right now and I kick you in your knee, your mind sends the signal to your body to say, "Hey, that hurts." Who said that hurts? Mm -hmm. Who said that hurts? Your mind. Your mind. What happened to the, back then? Our, our ancestors didn't take medication. They mind heal. Your mind heals the body. Mm -hmm. Your mind heals. Your, listen, your mind has so much power. What you think of, what you speak, and what you do. Again, speak, think, and do. Whatever I have here, I'm going to speak it from my mouth. Mm -hmm. Whatever I speak from my mouth, I'm going to do it. There's so much power just in those three 
Trust it's like, a, I, the same thing I say all the time. That's why it's funny to me as you talk. It's the same thing. <laughs> but this is why you and I connect. Like, <laughs> like, the first funny. time you talk, we were like, bro, we can't talk too long. We'll be on this phone yeah, all day. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it is so true that you speak things in the God yeah. existence. Yeah. In God, you are the image of God and you speak things in the existence. Therefore, you should be very mm -hmm. careful what comes out of your mm -hmm. mouth. And I, I feel like this. And be very specific. You got to be. You got to be very <laughs> Jesus, specific. specific. You know, I'm from the South. So, you know, we say our S's with our P's. Yeah. <laughs> so Pacific, what? Well, Atlantic? <laughs> like, no, sir. But, you know, there are so many people need to see and witness young men that has this much fire for God and, and, is, and is willing to talk about God anywhere. I tell somebody, listen, bro, I will cry in a minute. You, bro, listen, I will give a praise break in a heartbeat. And I will straighten you out in a heartbeat, too. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I mean? I, and, and people got to understand that, like, bro, like, like to, to, to walk this walk, the only thing you're sacrificing is yourself. That's it. My question to you is, I know that you've been doing the motivational speaking since, what, 2006? Has it been? 17. To 2017, because mm -hmm. you, you got out in 2006. Six. So it took you a while to start the motivational speaking. I, I ran from it. Okay, that's Oh, what, yes. That sounds like Jonah, like what we're talking yes, about. Yes, I already. ran from it. I ran okay. from it. So that long, so that was like 11 years. 11, from 2006, I started mentoring. And your, fit, your, your YouTube... What started mm -hmm. from 2006 because mm -hmm. I went back and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So. You know, I was I was just tampering with things. You know, I was just trying to experience some things, trying to figure this thing out. So you didn't think you were ready yet? I I, I got ahead of God. I, I, I feel like what he was calling me to do, it wasn't him what he was telling me to do. I was going on what I wanted to do. And, and everything that I was trying to do wasn't, wasn't working. working. It wasn't working. I just felt so out of place. And I'm like, this... What, I got to share this story. And I tell people, I didn't choose this platform. It chose me. Mm -hmm. Literally. If people don't believe in God, that's on you. But God is real. I had many encounters. My last encounter with God was I was woken out of my sleep. Not just by no voice, but something physical. Mm -hmm. Literally. 2012, I was woken up out of my sleep like somebody shook my leg, and I'm the only one in this house. And I remember watching a movie called The Passion of the Christ. Love that movie. And the, and the thing what happened is that when I watched that movie, I was afraid, I was startled, but I was confused. God, what are you trying to tell me? Had somebody from Hawaii reach out to me and tell me that, hey, we, 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 we want to let you know that we want to tell you that God is telling me to tell you that you're going to be on a platform traveling mm. all around the world. This is in 2012. Wow. This is the same dream and vision I had, but I ain't say nothing to this person because I don't even really know you. Then two, three days later, that same person reached out to me again and said, listen, I don't know why God's telling me to tell you this, but whatever he's telling you to do, you better do it. He said, because I had a dream that you're going to be an author of five best-selling uh, um, uh, books. You're going to be traveling around the world, inspiring people. And everything that God started showing to me, revealing to me, I started doing, and it started happening. Writing a book, starting apparel, started a nonprofit for boys. You know, having a have, having a platform to where I can I can use my past experiences <clears throat> to change and save lives. Mm -hmm. And so, to have this opportunity, I can't help but give God nothing but glory. Because this is your work. This is not my work. This is not my doing. But how I'm able to go in the pits of hell, when I'm able to pull those that's in the dark out, when I'm able to go on, on, on certain platforms with those who wear suits and ties and I can wear a ball cap and some Nike Air Maxes and still change lives and still, and still impact and empower people, mm -hmm. how I'm able to do these things and come from the background that I have. I don't have the educational background. I don't have the mentors. I, I'm not a, I'm, I didn't go to college and do all this stuff. I didn't have a person telling me you're going to graduate school. I didn't play no sports. I was selling dope at 12 and 13 years old. I was carrying a firearm at 13. Man, I was facing a life sentence at 13 years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so when people talk about how, bro, this is God. This is God's work. This is not my work. I'm just doing the work. Man. He's doing the blessing. That's it. That's how it works. That's you it. do his will. And guess what he do? 
then he'll bless you. Yeah, yeah. And now bless is not always money. No. That's what a lot of people, and I wish churches stopped preaching that. Wow. I really wish churches mm-hmm. stopped preaching finances. It's things. It's things. Mm-hmm. Overcoming something is a blessing. Mm-hmm. God, and stop praying for God to bless you with something. God, listen, it's almost, I tell people, it's almost like going to your parents and always asking for something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why not go to your parents like, do you need me to do something? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why, d- Dad, you need me to do something? Mm-hmm. You need help with something? Mm-hmm. I get it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Why not go to God and say, God, use me. Use me to your to, to, to whatever do to whatever I need to do for your good, for your greater good. Use me. Cause if I die today, I swear for God, I don't want no preacher preaching at my funeral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I said, listen, I want I told my sister, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't want no preacher. I said, you better let everybody come up and get two minutes, my whole entire service. Cause I know I inspire, I impact many people and let people get that time. I don't need I don't need nobody standing up in my funeral talking about listen, let pe- put me on a, a backdrop and show my videos and see the work. Now, do That's is, powerful. Is, mm-hmm. is is it is it more that I could have done? Yes. Always. Always. But his will will be done. Yes. But I'm steady pouring. I'm steady pouring. I poured into the dude who was in it just now. I know. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing. You don't even know. I'm gonna give you a nugget. Maybe it it'll resonate with you. Today, tomorrow, next week, I don't know. To the young lady who was with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never be ashamed to talk about God. Yeah, never, never. You, you were saying that, oh my God, yeah, never be ashamed to talk about God anywhere. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's how the doors is going to open. That's how you're going to be able to walk in places no one able to walk into. Wow. So I know earlier you were talking, you said you were married twice. Twice. Oh my God. Um, did you have any kids? I have three beautiful, amazing, gorgeous little girls. That's Eleven, Renaya, six, Kaylin, and that number two, Uriah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those, Uriah. Those are pretty names. Uriah, yes. No boys. <laughs> no boys, and I don't want no boys. <laughs> I don't think I can have boys. But I think and it's another thing. God knew what to do. I, 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 you see, I always I direct everything back to God, and I say that because those two relationships, those two marriages that I I wore, I was in, they had sons. And the, the the torture, the abuse my father gave to me, I saw it come out on them. I saw it come out on them. Mm-hmm. When it was time for me to be disciplined, I didn't know the power in just sitting them down and talking. It was always, I'm going to whoop you. I'm going to toughen you up. And I had to have a reality a reality check because I was like, whoa, whoa. I'm becoming what I Oh, hate. yeah, yeah. That, 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 that person looked too familiar. Mm-hmm. I started seeing my father. Mm-hmm. And so I thank God because, one, to have girls, you can't be tough. Mm. You can't be hard. You can't, listen, you can't push them around. You can't, th- listen, you have to be, you have to understand love, compassion. And you have to be respectful. Because you don't want to go after a man mm-hmm. who looks like that type of man that you were. Yeah, and not even it's not even really that, t- but that's that too. It's not even really that because I didn't have a heart for women. Okay. I really did. If, I didn't even respect my mom. So how can I respect any woman that I'm married to? I can't. I don't even have a relationship with my mom. So I mean, I don't know. It, they say, listen, you pay attention how a man love his mother. That's mm-hmm. how he's going to love you. Yeah, I've heard that. You know, and I believe that. So I didn't have that relationship. So I didn't know how to love a woman. So let alone when I had my first daughter, I knew how to love. Mm. I knew how to get his little girl in my heart. And she had my heart. Then the second one came. Okay, okay. KK gonna let you know about her dad. That's my thing. Listen, don't say nothing stupid out your mouth. At six years old, she at six years old, she gonna say something. And a little two year old, she gonna tell everybody that's her daddy. What was it that you were starting to tell me off the air about when you had your kids? There's something you couldn't yeah. tell. Um, you know, as and, and again, I want people to understand that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes all your life.